guys, it is Queen. I just got off of a conference call with EA and they just announced to me that they are creating The Sims 4. It is official. Speculation has been, you know, drawn to it, but it is official. The Sims 4 will hit stores in 2014. It was that day my focus turned from green to blue, a new obsession to instill so many hours of core moments. The next generation Sims game? I couldn't even imagine what a new title would look like. My expectations were sky high and Max's had a tall glass to fill. Time seemed to slow down. The days dragged on while wondering when will it happen. Information spread matching small sparks fueling my anticipation. And all the questions. How will they look? What would they sound like? What can be bigger than a whole town? The country? The the universe? My young mind held no bounds to the huge possibilities of what I used to think was impossible. My commitment to the hype sustained by hopes and prayers. After a couple of long and lethargic months, I was given the taste of the next 10 years. August 20th, 2013, time sped up. Nothing mattered between the spaces of each teaser, every first look, and every gameplay reveal. The days melted into weeks, then months all colored by The Sims 4. New Sims, better stories. They're so smart and so weird. I'll get used to it, I guess. It's The Sims. I know I'll love it regardless. Those fuzzy feelings grew into a frenzy and transformed into hysteria. After a year-long wait, I couldn't fathom that I'd finally get to hear. Hey guys, it is me, Life Simmer, and welcome to my Sims 4 LP Part 1. What's up everybody? Back in for the first time ever with some Sims 4 action. Hey everyone, it's me, Curtis Parody, and welcome to my very first Sims 4 house building video. That's right everyone, inside of The Sims 4. What is up everyone? Mr. Aviator here bringing you the very first episode of my Sims 4 and Let's Play here on Aviator Games. Being one of the best-selling game series of all time, it's natural that there's going to be a whole lot of speculation is whether or not it's going to be any good. Well, that is what I'm here to tell you in my opinion today. Yes, it's time for... The Sims 4, developed by Maxis and published by Electronic Arts in 2014 for Windows PCs. The Sims 4 has launched and I've leaped over the moon twice. I could enjoy the promise of evolution in my all-time favorite gaming series. Except I didn't. I was broke. Actually, I was just a freshman in high school, so of course I was broke. With nowhere to play, I'd consume a plethora of Sims 4 Part 1s on YouTube, mainly from my favorite creators, but then when that well ran dry, I turned to people i never even heard of before and couldn't remember to this day. I just needed to see content. Obsessed would be understating the state of mind I had as a teen. My mom was all too aware the Sims 4 released. Just over a month later, I was able to receive the game as a happy birthday. A tradition to gift Sims games for birthdays and Christmases, this gift topped all that came before. I'm still not ashamed to say I was not disappointed my sprained ankle had cut the party short. All this meant was I got to go home and play The Sims 4 well into the night. Fast forward to 2015. I've been playing for a couple months now. Outdoor Retreat and Get to Work have been launched and my YouTube homepage mirrors Sims 4 search results. I was always up to date on new Let's Plays or packs and updates. All new content was good content. I was aware of the minority complaining about pools, toddlers, and the lack of depth. It never phased me. I love the game so much it was easy to ignore the holes. The community seemed to matter Match my sentiment just the same. Even the ones who brought up critiques made sure to praise the game for the parts that were deserved. Positivity was all around, swirling, surrounding, suffocating. It was only up from here. Three more years and who knows what The Sims 5 will be like. A lot of the same continued as well as added quotations on a lot of the new. Add one expansion pack, a game pack, and four stuff packs along with many, many, many patch updates. You get another great year for The Sims 4. Rose colored glasses, freshly cleaned, and I'm ready for a new season of The Sims. What I wasn't ready for was a wake up call. A really lazy wake up call. It comes down to the fact that I think this past 
two years have been the weakest in The Sims history. And if you're still like on fire for the game, like it really gets you rock hard, then more power to you. I wish I was there. Uh, perhaps you haven't played the series as long as I have. <laughs> Not to sound elitist or anything, but I think it does make a difference where you come into the series as to how much enjoyment you're going to get out of The Sims 4. Because while The Sims 4 is very approachable, accessible, streamlined, and a whole bunch of other buzzwords that sound really good in PR speak, uh, it doesn't necessarily translate to deep or meaningful gameplay. And that, I think, is what it comes down to as far as why I'm just not engaged in the series anymore. I watched all 21 minutes and 10 seconds of that video, and that's saying something as I didn't know I could speed up videos back then. For lack of a better term, I was just kind of stuck. The rose glasses had slid down my nose and I was questioning the past two years. A lot of bugs and patches to sweep them under. More not so new content, but it was good. It was good, right? Starting save after save, fresh storylines, more builds, and hundreds of hours of in-game time. Addiction means it was good right? I didn't want to say The Sims 4 was bad because to me it wasn't. I heavily enjoyed the game despite its faults. They fixed the game before. They could do it again. So I decided The Sims 4 was a work in progress and that was okay. Still my determination to avoid the obvious wasn't enough and each bug became a little more noticeable and every critique a little more audible. City living had a rough start and I noticed. Did you hear apartments were customizable? But at least we have apartments. You can forgive Willow Creek and that other one that looks like a desert. What about elevators that aren't even functional. Yeah, but they added so much diversity. Look at all this Asian culture. All these bugs are starting to make the game unplayable. Well, if you just take out your CC and mods and play vanilla for a while, they'll eventually fix the bugs. I talked myself down, reminding myself despite the past two years of mediocrity, it was also two years of comfort. I was comfortable with the state of the game. All I could do is hope for better days so the rest of the community could enjoy the game the same way I did. <laughs> I started the year 2017 with eyes open yet running blind. I had to love this game and it wasn't hard to convince myself that I did. Toddlers dropped out of nowhere and vampires followed and I left my doubts in 2016. I was on a high and I was going to ride past the bugs, past the missing features and all unanswered questions. Parenthood was made for players like me. It felt like they really cared about players like me. Bowling night stuff? I'll take it. Toddler stuff? Even better. Add the fact that I started working my first job spring 2017, nothing could beat the feeling of purchasing packs when I want because I want it. That freedom was short-lived because I was jobless by the release of Cats and Dogs. My mom bought it for me anyway. I always had a good life and I could never deny that. I had all the packs with a new expansion to occupy my time. I no longer had to convince myself. The high was snatched when my laptop charger broke inside the laptop, stealing The Sims 4 with it. I was finally back to playing how I used to, yet it was taken too soon. A simple issue really, but it felt that melodramatic. A lot of changes were happening during this time, so it was nice to have a constant. I didn't want to lose that, so like the junkie I was, I found the closest way to play The Sims 4 again. Playing on console was a strange experience. Most of the packs hadn't been released yet and the lack of CC forced me to get real close and personal with a vanilla experience. It was a slow start but I was able to get back into the game and just like that I was back on the hype train. What we've got is The Sims 4 My First Pet Stuff and it's the single stupidest pack for The Sims 4 thus far. What I mean by that is this is the first time that a stuff pack requires you to have bought a previous pack in order to fully utilize it. Seriously, an expansion for an expansion. This means that unless you've already bought and installed the $40 Cats and Dogs expansion pack, you do not get to use everything in the $10 first pet stuff pack that you just bought. March 13th, 2018 was a sad day in Sims history. For the first time ever, a DLC was required for a DLC. It was challenging to find the right words of what I was feeling. Shocked, disappointed, frustrated, angry. I was angry and so was the community. I had never seen so many Simmers react like this towards a pack. The Sims always had this intense positive vibe. There were always critiques, but this time a lot of it came from a majority of players online. I knew EA had a horrible reputation when it came to the development of franchises outside of The Sims 4. Despite this, The Sims was different. After all these years, they should understand The Sims and its players are different and they wouldn't touch the game in that way. My forced ignorance wasn't going to 
to save me this time. EA did what they did for a reason and their motivations are obvious. So many players took a stance not to purchase the pack, so I stood with them. I still like the game, so I wasn't going to let this one fault ruin it for me. Didn't change the outcome of sale. Unfortunately, all press is good press, regardless of the hate. For the first time, I was siding with the negative. I needed a distraction and was desperate to forget what was going on and enjoy my game as it is. October 13th, I posted my first video on YouTube. Terrible quality aside, I enjoyed showcasing my playstyle. Heavy storylines with each episode, it's a shame I could never complete a series. Console had its own list of issues, missing packs that were available on PC, no gallery and lack of modding capability, which was more of a Sony issue. The Sims was starting to lull and drag again. A pattern started to form where I would hyper fixate on the game for days to then find it difficult to play a week later. A lot of short bursts following even longer breaks. Could never find the momentum to stay consistent. What I didn't know is the cycle would prevail and all it took was one good thing to get me back on the train. Christmas of 2018, I was gifted a new laptop to start off a new semester. Yet all I could focus on was getting back to the original way to play. I had all my packs again, could finally play with seasons, and had access to hundreds of CC options. New content was the key. Buying more content means more motivation to play. It wasn't hard to get back into the game with seasons being the best expansion for The Sims 4 at the time. To this day, I will support seasons because the premise of the pack captures what an expansion should do. Expand the game. February 2019 felt like the start of 2016 all over again. Returned to making content for YouTube and there was talk about a new game pack coming this month. A story based pack? You mean like story mode? More packs the better. <sighs> <coughs> <coughs> I couldn't tell if I would enjoy this pack or not. There's lore, which is what we've been asking for, a throwback to Strange Town, and a silent nod to a show I'd die for, so it must be worth something. All it took was one day to complete the pack, and outside of all that was a couple of new items and Willow Creek with a desert skin. The Sims 4 was lifeless again, and it was starting to feel defeated. This would be prevalent on my YouTube channel as I would often take breaks, start and stop multiple series. The thought of giving up on The Sims was never even considered. I spent so many years dedicated to this franchise, I couldn't see a viable way to make it work. The excitement didn't last long for Island Living, as I couldn't afford to purchase packs at the time of release. Therefore, the lull continued, and the release of new packs failed to keep me interested. I couldn't play them either way, and the content I was watching on YouTube showcased why they wouldn't be worth it in the end. I reached an impasse, and I was ready to start enjoying the game again. The unfavorable atmosphere around The Sims 4 was draining and any interest in playing was close to gone. 2020 had a lot of new gaming opportunities and all were outside of The Sims. Gaming was fun again, I was able to play games of the past as well as dive into new games of today. Switching from Sims 4 content to other games I've loved for so long. This separation from The Sims was the first that I savored. Forgotten was the guilty feeling for having zero to little interest in the packs released during this year. A new job with higher pay basically fell into my lap, so more thought was put into what I spent my earnings on. Purchased my first gaming PC and I was back racing around the moon. I couldn't believe how smooth my games ran, along with how gorgeous everything looked. It may seem how The Sims ran with this expensive upgrade, going from laptop mode to all settings on ultra high was a dream. Eventually, my impulse would get the best of me and I had to buy most of the recent packs, except for a few unmentionables. However, I refused to sink into another Sims 4 obsession, not after so much trust was lost after years years of public negligence on EA's part. Making more Sims, Let's Plays, or challenges no longer felt normal to post. I chose balance by playing The Sims 4 personally while still discovering my current whims. Fully accepting The Sims 4's faults and the probability with more to come, I was comfortable with enjoying The Sims on the side. Players online have denounced EA and I understood all their grievances. I knew I would never obsess over The Sims 4 like I used to, but I was okay with the balance. If EA gave players what they want, we could reach a good place. Hope was the new buzzword for the community. During this time, I was not afraid to hope. <gasps> Whoa! Not cool! You'll never make any friends that way. 
To this day, I will never understand the reasoning behind whatever this was besides contractual agreements and monetary growth. They had an entire poll about what the community wanted, and I swear Star Wars was one of the last on the list. EA had a tendency to make questionable decisions when it came to The Sims, but this made it intensely clear what they were doing and why they were doing it. I was mistaken to thinking The Sims community was the worst it had ever been before this Disney ad was revealed. Appalled wouldn't cut it, disgusted wasn't enough. I was tired tired of the blatant disregard of their core fans. This game pack didn't even serve the new ones. I feel so bad for the Star Wars fans who were fairly excited. Turns out the pack was as empty as the ones before, probably the worst in terms of gameplay. Based on the fact that there wasn't any, a sour taste was left in the community's mouth and would take a lot to wash it out. A mistake like this one only exacerbated ongoing issues. The community was yelling at the gurus, players were screaming at each other, words like toxic and problematic were being thrown around, and I was embarrassed of playing The Sims 4. Public opinion said sank and I sank right with it. Future packs would come after and I would start to hope. Expectations were low but hope was still present. As a business standpoint, it made sense to release Snowy Escape as the next expansion. Realistically, it was just the next pack ready to be released. Therefore, I bought the pack day one and surprisingly enjoyed my experience despite the criticism. I enjoyed the new content for all of one week and I was right back to where I started. I even broke my personal rule with no let's plays. Wasn't surprised I never made it past part one. 2020 was the worst year yet and by the end of the year, all my hope, trust, and faith in EA's capability to revolutionize the Sims died. A new year yet same issues times 10. I rarely watched gameplay videos to now preferring Sims 4 discussions and reviews. Packs were still one after the other with another not so welcome addition, kits. It felt as if any new fad The Sims was advertising was despite the long laundry list that had yet to be addressed. It seemed by this point we were only listened to when we became too much of a bigger problem to handle. The community was heated and I matched the energy. I used to do my best to balance my emotions and enjoy the game as much as I can, but by now I just felt stupid and played. So much so I posted my first video publicly denouncing The Sims 4. I would continue this trend up until Cottage Living was revealed as the next expansion. I didn't want to hope, but it it was exhausting to fight it. One thing EA had down was marketing. Having the urge to escape the constant negative atmosphere, I decided to do a let's play. Good news, I got past part one. Bad news, by part six, I could no longer fake it and I switched to a new game genre entirely. It's like I was revolting against the slump I would eventually fall into and reject The Sims 4. Well aware of the cycle by this point and I hated it. I couldn't understand why I kept going back to The Sims when the cycle was so unhealthy. I continued the same patterns well into 2022 by creating videos discussing The Sims 4 and playing on my personal time. The way I played completely shifted with me favoring build mode rather than playing with actual Sims. A sort of slow burn began during this year that I'm still confused on what happened to this day. It started with me covering the controversy surrounding my wedding stories, continuing to denounce EA and The Sims 4 for its current and past problematic moments, just a constant feeding into the public opinion while spreading my own strife. I felt very frustrated, yes, but sometimes my emotions overshadowed how trivial it all was. I rode the highs and lows at a much faster pace until ultimately I became drained of talking about The Sims 4, refusing to cave into the burnout because I've never seen this amount of views on my channel. Not much in the grand scheme, but it was so new to me. I experienced more growth during this year alone than the four previous. Keep posting, keep talking. This was a good thing. I thought I owed it to myself, but really I turned a hobby into an obligation, an obligation to no one. And once I realized that, I had to question why I was posting in the first place. This led to the inconsistency and lack of motivation. I'd allowed my opinions to melt into the communities and take on an anger I never had. It never was real, just a blind form of rage baiting. I was disgusted, felt resentment towards everything involving The Sims 4, and had to step away from the game and my YouTube channel. I will never regret taking a pause from social media. I had space to dissect my own feelings and emotions. I started putting my energy toward forgotten pastimes. The Sims 3 held so much sentimental value but was overshadowed by the current title. Returning to The Sims 3 reminded me of my love for life simulation. We visited The Last of Us, which always had been an all-time favorite. Finally, I was able to understand. I didn't hate The Sims 4, nor was I angry about its faults. Optimistic about the new year, I came back to YouTube and made two videos 
playing The Sims 4. Recording used to be my favorite part, but was now a chore and editing even more of a pain. Instead of a mixture of anger and guilt, I was free to understand playing The Sims 4 was a forced experience. I would never have those heyday feels again, and it felt so good to recognize. I go more into detail what that realization was like and what led up to it in a video title, why I switched to The Sims 3. Long story short, The Sims 4 was uninstalled before my Growing Together review was completed. The pool was gone with no desire to return. Seeing new content drop with kits and a possible horse expansion have little response from me besides a quick nod of acknowledgement. I won't say I'll never return to The Sims 4, but I know what finality feels like and I could couldn't imagine anything closer than this. A decision was made to only upload videos when I felt the inspiration to do so. I plan to continue to experiment with different game genres on my second channel. Watching Sims videos is a thing of the past, besides very few channels that have that special charm. Add new game releases on the horizon, and I think I'm back to enjoying gaming in such a healthy and fulfilling way. I guess I would call this more of a personal retrospective instead of a complete timeline of The Sims 4. I wanted to dig deep into my own experience instead of copying the wonderful videos that already exist. This video was actually inspired by this one here. It's definitely worth a watch. With new freedom of the mind, I questioned what led me to this point of giving up The Sims 4. Telling my story could even help you do some digging in your experience. If you haven't realized by now, I'm a bit dramatic, yet I'd lied if I didn't admit I kinda love it. I guess I hope you stick around for more theatrics. Well, now that I've dumped this all on you, I'll just leave it here and let you soak in it. See you soon.